Hello everybody, uh, this is just going to be a quick down and dirty uh, overview of the electronic scoreboard I made for uh, specifically for Stratomatic. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot that makes it specific to Stratomatic, but it does have a few things that will help Stratomatic specific players. And I've been enjoying it and um, I had to create a version that I could share um, that doesn't include all the Stratomatic charts that I would typically have in my version, but I think this one plays well. It's got uh, my own created X-Fielding charts along with uh, the creative uh, X-Fielding add-on that Balkmaster has made, and he has graciously allowed in us to uh, share it here and use it. So I'll put out the uh, URL web address uh, for everybody to see it. This is what you'll see when you get there. Uh, just click on the baseball to start. And just blew my ears out. Okay, so when you first go in, it will tell you to align the tokens. What that's talking about are these base running talk tokens. Um, what you do is see it's got the little grabber hand. When you hover over it, you click and grab it and just put it on the bases. Because what I found with everybody's resolution being different on their computers, these may appear in weird places when you first come up. So before we start a game, basically we want to align the tokens. Put the third base token on third base, the second base token on second base, and the first base token on first base. I'm just going to click, hold, and drag, and release. Okay, the other thing you want to do is select your ballpark, which I'm going with the standard uh, game mat. Uh, but you can go to your park and select different places to play. And if you were playing candlestick, then you would want to drag them to where you want them to appear when they're on first, second, and third base. Okay, let me go back um, to my strat 2, one I use all the time. So again, I'm just click, hold, drag, and release. And then once we start the game, these will disappear and they'll come back in the places that they were last dragged to when they're used. Okay, so now you want to fill in the lineups. So I have some that will load automatically, but you can just type these lineups in. Um, once I put in Cubs 2016 and Indians 2016, then I have code that loads these automatically. But say you were typing in um, Ben Zobrist, second base 314 again you would just type it in then just like you'd have to write down on your lineup sheet zobras um, you would select second base or whatever position and then put in there um, for this is just for basic let me emphasize that this is for stratomatic basic so you would put in their uh, range number and then their running number ben is a 14. So once you've entered in, uh, don't forget your pitcher. You want to put your pitcher's name up here. Um, once you've entered in this information and aligned your tokens, you want to click on the clock, anywhere on the clock to start the game. So I'm going to click on the clock to start the game. Okay, so this is what comes up when you start a game. <clears throat> the dice will magically appear here. Uh, again, this has the click and drag function. You can maybe leave it up here. Um, it will do a re-roll after every batter, after every entry that you make. So basically the scoreboard allows for dice rolls um, or you can turn the dice off by clicking here. Bring the back the dice by clicking there. Um, so you can use the dice or not. You can use your own. And basically what you're doing is entering in the results of each at-bat and it will keep the score for you as you go along. There's no going back so if you make an error you have to live with it so just get used to the scoreboard play around with it before you play a, a real game and i've been using it for years and i love it but sometimes i like doing it on paper so it just depends so um you might want to leave the dice up here i prefer to kind of put the guy right on the pitcher's mound and so uh, one of the buttons up here is roll and this will do a re-roll for you just clicking on that button Okay, um, so let's see, that's how you roll. The click and drag options we have available is, um, 
I like to click right on the pitcher's name or the batter's name. Click and drag and hold. You can put them wherever you want. Click, drag, hold. So you can just kind of click and drag them to wherever you want them to be. Okay. Um, what else? Showed you how to hide the dice. So what's going to happen is you basically just go through the, the game uh, the normal way. You would use the buttons. So on this particular roll, one, four, I don't have the cards in front of me. Dexter Fowler. Let's say he walked. So you could just click on base on ball. That puts Dexter Fowler on first base. There's a slight delay while it's loading up the base runner. You can change the person's name right here. Uh, Dexter Fowler. Now the base running is a little tricky. So um, if Dexter was to steal, it still retains his name. Uh, you click on stolen base. But the, the thing that it doesn't do is say, um, while I'm thinking about it, say Dexter Fowler just got picked off. There's two, way to enter out, two ways to enter outs. If Ben Zobrist was to get out in a normal way, you would just click up here and it advance to the next batter because Ben Zobrist got out, whichever way he got out. And this just keeps a basic scoreboard and X, X for outs. But if Fowler was to get out, we want to create an out without advancing to the next batter. We're going to click this out. And when I do, you see it says out here, and it added an out. And it kept Chris Bryant at bat. You can see it made no entry. But Dexter Fowler needs to be cleared off second base. So to clear runners from the bases, I'm going to hit two to clear second base on my keyboard. And now Dexter Fowler's gone. If I needed to add a runner on third, put, click three on your keyboard. <clears throat> and there's a slight delay while it loads the runner. The plus sign will be to allow you to identify that runner as a different person if you need to. Now, never do this. Try to move the tokens yourself. There's one for first base, there's one for second base, and third base. So don't move the tokens yourself. Otherwise, it won't keep score properly for you. So if Jason Hayward was on third base, and it's impossible because let's just clear third base by clicking three on the keyboard. Chris Bryant's at bat. Let's say he gets a double, okay? I'm going to click up here for a double. That puts Chris Bryant on first, uh, second base. <clears throat> Anthony Rizzo's at bat. So the reason I'm trying to tell you not to move the tokens manually is because, say, Anthony Rizzo gets a single. I'm going to go up here and click on single. You can see it puts Anthony Rizzo on first and Chris Bryant. It automatically moves the runners. What it won't do is, say, Jorge Soler hits a mm, sack fly, which he couldn't do right now. Say he gets on base via error. And you need to show that Bryant scores. But sometimes, like in this case, if I click on error, my code is, is not programmed to automatically allow the run in. Or if there was only one out and he hits a sack fly and I want to show Chris Bryant scoring in some re, uh, result that's not capturing automatically him scoring. So let's say there's an error. And... Um, what it will do is move Anthony to second, put Jorge on first, but say Chris Bryant scored on this. What I'm going to do is just click on the Cubs, and you can see it'll add a run. And then I'm going to click key, click on three on my keyboard to clear third base. Okay? So don't um, manually move the tokens because then it won't automatically keep score. But say Addison Russell hits a triple. It's going to score both of these runs automatically. That's kind of where I'm headed with this. So let's say he hits triple. Puts Addy on third, and you can see the two runs were added, and the RBIs were added for Addison Russell. So let's say Jason Hayward strikes out. Okay? Switches to the bottom of the inning, and switches um, the home pitcher, and the visiting batters are now up. Let's say Carlos Santana grounds out. I'll just click on out. Okay. So that's kind of the gist of it. I only have 15 minutes, so I have to close up uh, 
for this free video version of uh, um, that I'm using for making this video. I forget what it's called. So to use the uh, X fielding, um, if you get an X fielding factor, just click here or hit X on your keyboard. So if I click here, say Jason Kipnis gets an X fielding result. Click here. This, because I can't use Stratomatic uh, charts, is just a system I came up with that's loosely based on that. But there are more results. Um, I have 30 or 35, I think, different scenarios uh, built into the code. And so, say it was an Addison Russell shortstop check, it'd be out using one, out if it's infield with runners on first, double play others uh, advance. Okay? And so you would use that result. And you can just click on it and it goes away. And that's if there was a runner on first. So otherwise, it would just be an out. Now, the other thing, the Bulk Master has created these neat charts that we can use. And to access the X, again, you hit here. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna click on X on my keyboard to bring it up. Hit X to make it go away, X. And what I'm trying to do is to bring up one of Bulk Masters here. It's a situational thing. And it'll come up on its own randomly. Um, I think I have it programmed to come up twice in numbers between one and 35. And we can adjust that if it's coming up too much. And so basically, you've got the dice roll here. And this is the 20 die, the D20 result here. And um, so you can click on it again if you want to, to get a new result by re-rolling. But it gives the same result that was there. And basically use your D20, and this would be a hit by pitcher. Hit by pitcher, number 4, 18. And then you would go through this scenario. So this is a sample of one of the bulk master charts. And it'll come up based on your bases automatically. If it's first and third, that one will come up. So all you have to do is click on the X. Okay, really have to, <clears throat> excuse me, I really have to rush now. I'm down to three minutes. So we've talked about the different out options. Um, run on first. If you have any questions, hit me up on the Delphi forums. I'll make an announcement and give the URL web address for it. Um, Oh, to view the other picture, if you want to, for some reason, just click on the picture and it'll switch to the other picture. But don't forget to switch back because Lester is on the mound right now facing the Indians. Um, so you get a basic um, box score kept at the bottom. And to end the game, oh, to change pictures. Say I want to uh, take Lester out. That's what this little reset button is here. So if you want to take a picture out, you click here. And it automatically takes you to the field that needs to be filled in. See the cursor's already there? It's already put me in there. Just put in your relief pitcher's name. And if it's spelled correctly and is in our database, um, click lineup to close it. His picture will come up. And it'll put the new picture in. And while I'm thinking about it, to access any lineup changes during the game, don't just go in here and type in a new player name because there are keyboard shortcuts that I don't have time to go into right now for a lot of the things that we're doing for clicking on these for these um, entries. So you need to make sure you click on the lineup before you start typing in here because otherwise things will be happening and home runs will be hit if you click H and things like that. But this will stop it if you're in the lineup card and to get out of lineup just click lineup. Okay, so we're down to the last minute, and I just wanted to get this stuff out there, and I'll answer questions on the forum. Um, to end the game, hit Q on your keyboard. Q on your keyboard. So, let's put a bunch of outs and Ks and singles and errors. Okay, say the game was over and we had nine points. Hit Q on your keyboard. Game over. And what it does, it just, you know, kind of closes up shop and presents the, um, it, it does all your pitcher stats and it usually gets everything right. Um, the runs are not based on any, if there's unearned runs in there, we wouldn't know. Um, but it does give you the actual runs that were allowed. Um, strikeouts and things like that in a basic box score. So it's not perfect. And that's about it, folks. Um, I'm up to about my 15 minutes and I will talk to you online. Thanks.